Welcome to another Founder Wisdom podcast. We have Ding Ji Tan with us today, okay, DJ Tan, uh, co-founder and CTO at Prefer. He's Singapore's prince of fermentation. So we're going to talk about the goat of bean-free coffee, uh, interesting topic altogether. This podcast is presented to you by podpair.com. If you want to start, scale, monetize your podcast, go to podpair.com. It's also presented by our friends at Qualia. Qualia Mind is a product that I take to increase my productivity as a busy entrepreneur. So it helps with focus, memory, and drive. If you want to try it out, go to neurohacker.com slash CEO with them. Ding, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and what you're up to nowadays. Thanks for having me. Uh, lovely intro, by the way. Um, and yeah, so these days I'm busy with Prefer. Prefer, we are a startup making coffee without coffee beans. Uh, and we do this because we want to future-proof coffee from the threat of climate change. Um, and we do this by essentially fermenting bread, soy, and barley to create coffee flavors without relying on traditional farming and agriculture. Where did you get that idea in the first place? <laughs> well, um, I've been working in, in food and flavors uh, for about five years. I was consulting for a couple of high-end cocktail bars, restaurants here in Singapore. Um, I would help them develop new dishes, new drinks, new recipes, all based on fermentation. Um, and, and, and that was how I got to play around with flavors. Get, that's how I got the idea of creating flavors uh, through fermentation from ingredients that you otherwise wouldn't um, imagine that you use. Um, about a year and a half ago, I met my co-founder. Together, we, you know, we, we were brainstorming and we saw an opportunity. Uh, we saw a threat of, of climate change and we, we, we knew that we wanted to make sustainable flavors. Um, and we landed upon coffee because we both love coffee. We, we drink two or three cups a, a day on average. And, and that was how, that, that's how it all, it all started. Right. And I see here uh, one kilogram of coffee making requires 24, 29 kilograms of CO2. Is it one of the most uh, CO2 producing uh, matter per kilogram out there? Like give us a sense of how much uh, CO2 does it need to produce, for example, uh, almond milk, for example, compared to other uh, food substances? Yeah, uh, I I don't have the specific number for your for your for your for the example that you quoted almond milk, uh, but I can share. Uh, one kilogram of coffee generates twenty nine kilograms of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that per unit is greater than the amount generated for chicken. That is greater than the amount generated for pork, for fish, for shrimp, for eggs, uh, for dairy. So it is quite significant. Um, not as much as red meat like beef, for example, uh, but compared to yeah, chicken, eggs, milk, everyday items, still more significant. Uh, and, and that's why we really want to look at um, mitigating or alleviating this problem. Uh, as you can imagine, consuming coffee generates you know, more CO2, uh, more greenhouse gas emissions, which accelerates climate change, uh, which in turn uh, affects coffee supply. So this is, this is quite a vicious cycle uh, that we want to get out of. Right. And is there caffeine in there? Do you add the caffeine like separately? So yes, to your second point, we the, the product, the technology that we have is decaf by default. Uh, we buy caffeine powder, we add it in, um, and that allows us to dial in the exact dose of caffeine. Uh, so for folks like yourself who are very conscious about, about health, who are you know biohacking, uh, we can tune the exact amount of caffeine that you want for the time of the day that, that you're in. Yeah, and yeah, similar questions to uh, meatless products, right? Um, do you feel that it has similar effects to caffeine? Do you feel it's digested as well? Like what kind of feedback have you got on that level from customers? Um, I, I would say today we, are, we have not been optimizing for caffeine. Um, so we, we don't really hear a lot of feedback uh, about how people respond to the, to the caffeine content. Uh, our primary um, obsession today is flavor. 
So we are, we are really crazy about, about hearing how people enjoy it, or, or if they don't enjoy it, uh, we're going to hear why. Um, today, I, I'm glad that response has been quite encouraging and positive so far. People report that they love the nuttiness, they, they love uh, the milk chocolate flavors coming through in, in the coffee. Um, and, and that gives me motivation, that gives the team motivation to want to continue to, to work on it and to improve upon it. So we know that coffee is produced by uh, most of the time, I wouldn't say impoverished communities, but folks that have been doing that for decades and it's essential for the economy as well. So what is your take on, on that? Do you feel like if you scale your business, that could be taking away from these communities that are producing coffee? I think one of the, the things that um, I have learned in uh, in this journey is that communities are increasingly moving away from coffee. Um, as you can imagine, younger generation, um, the, the, the youth in countries that traditionally produce coffee, no longer want to work on farms. Uh, younger folks are going to the cities. Uh, so you are having, simply put, fewer people wanting to grow coffee. Uh, and the, the, the few folks who want to remain in this noble profession of farming um, don't want to grow coffee anymore. Uh, coffee is... is, is not charged at a fair market rate um, and they are simply higher value crops that such farmers are willing are more interested to grow and sell for uh, so we so we, we we do hear that um we may potentially be quote unquote you know stealing their jobs but the reality is that people don't want to work on farms anymore uh and, and i think that threatens uh the coffee industry on a fundamental uh, generational level, um, and how and we need to we do need to find ways to continue to produce coffee without relying on on labor that can sometimes be exploitative, uh, without relying on farms which ultimately rely on a climate that is changing and becoming more harsh uh, for, for for conditions to grow. Right, the climate change part. Like, what have you observed scientifically uh, happening to our planet? How have you felt these effects firsthand? Uh, I mean, we we, we all know we, we can all see you know, you know weather patterns changing. We can all see uh, climate uh, global warming um, as a general phenomenon. Um, but specifically to the to the coffee farms, I, I think it's, it's it's quite problematic. Uh, so based on climate models. Uh, scientists predict that half of coffee farmland today uh, will be eroded by climate change. Uh, and that means a drastic decrease in supply. On top of that, we see extreme weather phenomena, floods, typhoons, frosts becoming more frequent. Um, and these further exacerbate the supply problems with coffee by destroying entire crops, by decreasing by, by eroding the, the quality uh, such that it's no longer consistent. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the negative impact of climate change on, on coffee production and supply is well documented and is a problem for the industry. Do you feel caffeine addiction is a problem on this planet Earth? Because as a biohacker, I've been consuming caffeine for uh, yeah, decade now plus, and the effects on my heart are super positive, well documented scientifically. The effects on the brain's memory as well, very well scientifically documented. Um, the effects against Alzheimer, which uh, I have in my family on my mother's side, are well documented. It's an antioxidant, but also I feel that a bunch of people are addicted to it. Myself, certainly. Uh, does it feel nice to, I mean, it's not like a a, a heroin withdrawal, right? But it, it's just not nice. Me thinking that I wouldn't have my cup of coffee starting my day is not great. And I think there's multiple uh, programs to uh, go on coffee fast, for example, nowadays. So but I, I hate drinking de decaf as well. Decaf doesn't taste as well. The process, uh, they use, I believe, alcohol to separate the, the caffeine and so forth. So it doesn't taste that good. So what are your thoughts on uh, fasting on coffee and on the world being addicted to coffee? I, I do believe in it and I, and I would, would welcome a, a fact check on this, um, that caffeine is the world's 
most widely consumed psychoactive uh, compound. Um, so, so I think it, it, it is a problem if caffeine withdrawal is affecting your day-to-day -day life. Um, I think most of most of us get by um, with or without uh, coffee. Um, but if, I think if you, know, if, if you find that you are becoming a lot more irritable, if you find that you, you, you're getting migraines when you don't drink coffee, uh, and, and I think that that's where caffeine addiction is a problem and, and should definitely uh, be worked out. Uh, one of the good things about Prefer uh, is that, again, we are decaf by default. So we, we hope to be able to provide folks who want you know, a beverage uh, that tastes like coffee, uh, but may not necessarily want the caffeine. Um, and yeah, so that, that, that is the, the decaffeination uh, issue is something that, that we've heard quite a bit. Um, and, and I think that's funnily enough, uh, that's where we have found a very interesting niche for folks who want to drink coffee but don't want caffeine. Um, like yourself, don't want to pay uh, an extra premium for a decaf coffee that tastes worse than ordinary coffee. Um, and yeah, that's that's uh, something that they, they have learned along the way. Yeah, and in fact, fact checking you there definitely caffeine is the most uh, consumed compound because caffeine is found in tea as well uh, in Argentina, Uruguay. Soft they drinks, drink uh, yerba mate. Yeah, uh, Coca Cola, right? Caffeine in there. Um, so yeah, the world is definitely hooked on caffeine now. Tell me about the economics of the business, how well it's going, how much uh, bags do you sell on a daily basis? Tell me about the startup. Yeah, I think, um, well, we, we are we're definitely growing. I think um, we're selling, let's, let's call it um, about 50 bags uh, a, a month um, where we're getting a lot of interest. Uh, we have a six week, backlog of customers so we're, we're desperately trying to fulfill their orders and desperately trying to get uh prefer bin free coffee into the, into the hands of people or, or, or folks who are interested to to you know to get to get your hands on it um and and that's what uh the team really is busy with these days uh we are trying to make more coffee we are trying to scale up production uh, and, and we are working to make it taste better um and when i say better i mean more closely more authentically uh to make it a, a more genuine impression of of coffee and what are your top goals this year if you have like this huge backlog what's the priority improving the product still r d yeah um it, it's uh, you, as you are no doubt familiar as a startup we have we have a million and one different priorities that's uh they are pulling us in the different directions uh, but I think that there are, there are two key, uh, I would say, problem statements that we are working towards. Uh, one, for sure, scaling up production. I, I think that is something that, that we see to be um, a, a hurdle to, to our growth. Uh, and we definitely want to make more coffee to get more people to try it and get more feedback that way. Uh, so, so that is key. Um, and and right, right next to that is improving the flavor of the product. Uh, we know that people like it. Um, we want, we want more people to like it. <laughs> so, so, so that's really what we're working towards. Um, but yeah, so we, we've, we've just closed a, a US $2 million uh, seed financing round. Uh, and, and that really has uh, been the rocket fuel uh, that's, that's propelling um, our, our growth at this stage. So we, with that $2 million, we've been able to hire the right folks, uh, experience minds in, 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 this, in this food manufacturing space, in this coffee space. Um, and we're also building up a larger facility uh, right here in Singapore to, to scale up our production. Right. And how do you market that product? First, what markets are you targeting right now? And second, like, is it just meta ads and TikTok ads? How do you market it? Interestingly enough, uh, we have not used ads at all. Uh, really, the we... we uh, the, the way we, we market really has been to talk to um, businesses. Um, we talk to cafe owners, coffee distributors, hotels, restaurants. Um, and, and these are the folks in, in the procurement teams, in the purchasing teams, who have seen coffee prices increase um, and are trying to protect uh, 
and trying to trying to trying to stay in business. Uh, simply put, uh, they are getting run out of of their job because copy prices keep increasing. Uh, and they, for better or for worse, cannot transfer those price increases to the coffee drinkers on the street because no one's going to pay ten fifteen dollars for a cup of latte. Uh, and, and that's a problem. Uh, so to, to these cafes, coffee distributors, suppliers, uh, having prefer as a more affordable, sustainable uh, alternative to coffee um, helps them stay in business. And, and uh, when when you market it as a, a survival uh, tactic for a business, it becomes surprisingly easy for, for some of these folks to want to, to try us and, and, and uh, bring us on board. Uh, a few of them, a few of our friends, our early adopters, um, are, have also been championing um, novel, innovative ways of, of pursuing coffee, of, of looking into food. Um, and, and we like them because they are so uh, future sighted about uh, the food ecosystem. Are you going to raise capital? Uh, uh, yes and no. Um, no, not yet. Yes, we will likely next year, um, and and we will we will we will, we will look to use that capital to scale up production even more, uh, and and bring green free coffee to parts of Asia, uh, and beyond. Very nice. And what about influencers using the product in the fitness community or in the um, environmental? protection community have you thought of that that is something um on the to-do list um i think we we will explore that you know we will we'll pull on that thread um along the way uh but i think today today we, we have seen quite a bit of traction uh with hotels with cafes with bars and restaurants who will, again are, are trying to find a more affordable and sustainable supply of coffee um we are we are a bit careful to to go down the, the route of you know, influencer marketing in, in fitness and, and lifestyle because that's all. Uh, we, we run the risk of, of being pigeon, pigeonholed into a similar style of product. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we are keeping our openness open and we'll, we'll see how things develop along the way. Very cool. Well, DJ, thank you for coming on today. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, check us out online, um, prefer.coffee. Uh, or prefer coffee SG on our social media handles. And thanks for having me again.